long time ago, this mosaic of Missouri farmland was a vast sea of blue stem and Indian prairie grasses. This prairie sod was host to the Indian, the buffalo, to many other prairie species. Now the virgin prairie sod is almost bent. The Indians are gone, the buffalo roams no more. Most of the prairie is now farmland, domesticated animals and men, its chief inhabitants. But in certain ranges, one wild creature still exists to give us memories of the distant past. Since the creature is untamed and tolerates little human intrusion, the camera had to be hidden in blinds. At dawn and dusk, it gathers on traditional sites. Its name? The Greater Prairie Chicken. Distinguished from its cousin, the sharp tail, this is the pinnated grouse. By some miracle of nature's persistence, this member of the grouse family still exists. At first glance, the greater prairie chicken seems quite commonplace, but its history and behavior belie its commonplace appearance. For instance, some authorities believe that ages ago, the Indian watched the prairie chicken and learned a new dance. The dance in which two feathers crown his head and stamps his feet in a prancing pivot. Many find it hard to believe that a bird like this one, calm and dignified, could inspire a dance of this kind. Yet, some archaeologists believe that this Indian call may also have had its origin in the prairie chicken. Well, let's look at the evidence. Does it merely cackle? The authorities may be right about the call. The chicken inflates its brilliant air sacs, raises its pinnae, the long neck feathers, and does more than cackle. It booms. And even though you search for and can't see the prairie chicken, you can hear its boom a mile away. Could be Indians, couldn't it? And the evidence for the origin of the Indian's dance is even more convincing. Listen to the patter of his prancing feet. The creature that booms and dances is quite a warrior, too. The traditional sites where the prairie chickens convene are called booming grounds. And as the males occupy the territory, their battles begin. Each male establishes himself in territory he likes to call his own. He resists invasion with valiant thrusts. Of course, since they have no maps establishing definite boundaries, the fighting is rather confused. A chicken will choose a certain spot and chase others from it. But Often, he moves to another's territory and is chased back to his own. Confused? Yes, but even men, though they have maps with precise boundaries, have had territorial squabbles for centuries. Like diplomats, they usually begin with calm discussion, courtesy, and dignity are the primary tones. This attitude soon changes. It's superseded by bluff and feints. Then, strong claims and counterclaims begin. Protocol ends. Go back where you came from. Go back where you came from. And when diplomacy fails, the weapons come to play.
flowers reach their peak in spring before the wild indigo comes to bloom. Once his domain is established, he anticipates the hen's visits. He puts on his best appearance, looks this way and that, and here she is. He heralds her appearance with a wolf call. Unaffected by it, she wanders among the males with sophisticated indifference. Of course, the males still squabble, but uh, not quite so much. With hens present, the male prefers to dance and boom. For the ritual of dancing and booming are the heart of this strange courtship. By the way, his technical name is Tympanicus Cupido Americanus. Uh, very roughly translated, this means American kettle drum love. Hmm. It's difficult to tell why the hen will prefer one male to another. We can only suppose that masterful courtship is one of the reasons. Some courtships fail at the outset. Despite his efforts, she turns and walks away. Sometimes, even though he bows to show his worship, she remains unresponsive. Some courtships last a little longer, but she seems uncomfortable. Uh-oh. Here is an ardent suitor. He has patience and persistence. She is poised and cool and seems determined to stay that way. Will she? becomes rich with color, the pink wild phlox, the blue spiderwort, and the orange yellow coreopsis, it's then we see another miracle of nature's persistence. She performs her motherly duties, and soon the prairie holds another life. How long will the greater prairie chicken be with us? Its close cousin, the heath hen, is already extinct. This bird, too, may soon disappear. Even though it's been illegal to kill them in Missouri for the past 40 years, the plow has been more deadly than the gun. Cultivation of the grasslands has almost destroyed the prairie chicken's habitat. Most of its traditional sites are now farms, and a wild, untamed creature now lives precariously next door to man. We do know that if foresighted farmers manage their land wisely, there will always be some grasslands. Grasslands where the prairie chicken will still have left some territory to fight about. One farmer said, I kind of like to hear them holler in the spring. So do most of us. But if the plow continues its deadly work, this strange ritual will be no more than a memory.